God has done it for you. Written and published by God Daily News. In the bustle of everyday life, it's easy to overlook the miracles God has performed for you. Wouldn't you like to understand, in a profound, effective manner, how God has been orchestrating events in your favor, with references from the Bible to back it up? That's what we're about to dig into. This discussion will not only help you recognize God's work in your life, but also build your faith and gratitude. And who knows? You might just discover that the biggest miracle is yet to come. Chapter 1 Recognizing God's Hand in Your Life In your spiritual journey, it's crucial to perceive God's omnipotent hand at work in your life, guiding your steps and orchestrating events for your good. This recognition isn't about a vague, esoteric concept but about a tangible, experiential reality. You must discern the movement of divine providence in your personal affairs, as well as in the broader world, to fully grasp the profundity of this concept. The Bible is replete with instances where God's hand actively intervenes in human affairs. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 declares, For I know the plans I for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. These aren't just words. They're a promise of divine involvement. So, how do you recognize God's hand? By staying attuned to His voice, His word, and His ways. This demands a disciplined, introspective approach. It requires you to sift through your experiences, your emotions, and your thoughts, scrutinizing them in light of biblical truths. Think of Joseph, who acknowledged God's hand even in the face of betrayal and slavery, and later said in Genesis 50 verse 20, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. It's this perspective that you need to cultivate, seeing God's purpose even in adversity. Chapter 2 Reflecting on Past Miracles Reflecting on past miracles in your life can enhance your understanding of God's active role in shaping your destiny. This isn't about mere reminiscence, it's a spiritual exercise that deepens your awareness of divine interventions, strengthens your faith, and helps you perceive God's continued presence in your life. Consider the biblical account of the Israelites in Exodus. Even though they witnessed extraordinary miracles, they quickly forgot God's acts and doubted His ability to provide for them. Exodus 16 verse 3 Similarly, you might miss recognizing God's miraculous works in your life if you don't intentionally reflect on them. The Apostle Paul, in his epistle to the Ephesians, urged them to remember their former state and appreciate the grace they'd received, Ephesians 2 verses 11 to 13. It's a call to reflection that's still relevant to you today. By looking back at your past miracles, you're better positioned to appreciate God's transformative power in your life. Reflection also builds expectations for future miracles. The psalmist declares, I will remember the deeds of the Lord, yes, I'll remember your miracles of long ago, Psalm 77 verse 11 NIV. This remembrance filled him with hope and confidence in God's future interventions. Chapter 3 Practicing Gratitude Daily Cultivating a habit of daily gratitude isn't only beneficial for your mental health, but it's also a profound spiritual practice that keeps you attuned to God's providence in your life. It's a divine discipline that, when practiced consistently, helps you acknowledge God's goodness and His prevailing role in your life. In your spiritual journey, it's crucial to realize that gratitude isn't merely about acknowledging the blessings you can see, touch, or feel. It's about recognizing the unseen hand of God that moves in your life, even in the seemingly insignificant moments. The Bible, in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18, instructs, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It's an invitation to express gratitude not only in times of abundance but also during trials and tribulations. You may wonder, how do I practice daily gratitude? It's simpler than you might think. Start your day by thanking God for a new dawn, for strength, and for His love. Throughout the day, pause and reflect on the blessings you've received, both big and small. Say a word of thanks for each. But remember, practicing gratitude isn't a one-and-done act. 
It's a continuous, evolving process that requires commitment and discipline. As you cultivate this habit, you'll begin to perceive God's hand in your life more clearly. You'll see that indeed, God has done it for you, and for that, you need to be perpetually grateful. Chapter 4 Trusting in God's Timing As you grow in gratitude for God's ongoing work in your life, you'll also learn the invaluable lesson of trusting in His perfect timing. This trust isn't just a passive acknowledgement but an active faith in the wisdom and sovereignty of God. It's about believing that He understands your needs better than you do and that His timing, even when it seems inconvenient, is always perfect. In Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1, King Solomon, known for his wisdom, wrote, To everything there's a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. This biblical truth underscores the importance of trusting in God's timing. It's a reminder that there's a divine schedule for every event in your life. When you trust in God's timing, you're essentially affirming your faith in His divine plan. However, trusting in God's timing can be challenging. It's human nature to want things to happen when we want them. But Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 advises, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your paths straight. This verse encourages you to put your trust in God's wisdom rather than your own. Trusting God's timing doesn't mean you sit back and do nothing. It means you continue to pray, to obey, and to seek God's will while patiently waiting for His perfect timing. It's about surrendering your desire for control and acknowledging that God's plan and timing are best. Chapter 5 Journaling God's Faithfulness One effective way to deepen your trust in God's perfect timing is through the practice of journaling His faithfulness. This practice isn't only therapeutic but also a spiritual discipline that enhances your relationship with God. When you journal God's faithfulness, you're documenting His works in your life, which serves as a testament to His unwavering love and mercy. Journaling God's faithfulness requires you to be attentive to His actions in your life. It's about acknowledging His presence and recording instances where His grace is manifested. This could be in the form of answered prayers, unexpected blessings, or even challenges that turned into opportunities for growth. By noting these down, you're creating a tangible record of God's faithfulness. The Psalms are an excellent example of this practice. David often journaled his experiences with God, recording God's faithfulness during his trials and tribulations. This act served as a reminder of God's consistent presence and protection, strengthening David's faith in God's perfect timing. Remember, journaling God's faithfulness isn't about glorifying your achievements, but recognizing God's hand in your journey. It's about appreciating His divine interventions and remembering that you're not alone in your struggles. Every time you review your entries, you're reminded of His never-ending love and faithfulness, reinforcing your trust in His perfect timing. In essence, journaling God's faithfulness is a powerful tool in strengthening your faith, fostering gratitude, and reminding you of God's constant presence in your life. It serves as a personal testament to the truth of Psalm 36 verse 5, Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. Chapter 6 Sharing Your Testimony Beyond the personal realm of journaling God's faithfulness, there's also the profound impact you can make by sharing your testimony with others. This act isn't only a display of gratitude for God's benevolence but also a tool of evangelism, shedding light on God's character and work in a way that's uniquely personal and compelling. Your testimony, the account of how God has intervened in your life, serves as a beacon of hope for others who are navigating through their storms. The Bible underscores this in Revelation 12 verse 11, stating that believers overcame Him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. This scripture signifies the power of testimony in overcoming spiritual battles. In sharing your testimony, you're not merely narrating an account of past events, but you're proclaiming God's transformative power and grace. You're echoing the sentiment of Psalm 66 verse 16, Come and hear, all you who fear God, let me tell you what He's done for me. By doing this, you're extending an invitation to others to witness God's goodness and mercy. However, 
it's crucial to approach this task with sensitivity. Your testimony should be shared with humility, authenticity, and respect for your listeners' perspectives. Remember, it's not about glorifying your past mistakes but about celebrating God's redeeming love. Chapter 7 Seeking Guidance Through Prayer In your spiritual journey, seeking guidance through prayer is an essential step that allows you to align your desires with God's will. Prayer is the conduit through which you communicate and maintain a relationship with God. By praying for guidance, you acknowledge your need for God's wisdom beyond your limited human understanding, as Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 urges you to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your path straight. This guidance-seeking prayer isn't a passive act but an active pursuit of God's wisdom. The Bible illustrates this in James 1 verse 5, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. It's not just about asking but also about believing that God will indeed provide the answers. Moreover, prayer isn't solely a monologue but a dialogue with God. It's not just about presenting your requests but also about listening for God's response. In 1 Samuel 3 verse 10, Samuel's response to God's call sets a model for us, Speak, for your servant is listening. By actively seeking God's voice in prayer, you open yourself to divine direction and insight. Chapter 8 Surrendering Your Worries While seeking divine guidance through prayer, it's crucial that you also surrender your worries to God, entrusting Him with your concerns and uncertainties. This act isn't only a testament of your faith in His sovereignty but also a manifestation of your trust in His divine plan. The Bible, in 1 Peter 5 verse 7, advises us to cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. This verse implies a proactive initiative on your part. It isn't about passively waiting for God to take away your worries, it's about actively surrendering them to Him. This step is integral to spiritual growth, as it enables you to relinquish control and acknowledge that God is ultimately in charge. In Philippians 4 verse 6, Paul instructs the believers in Philippi, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. This scripture underscores the importance of presenting your worries to God through prayer, which is a conduit for divine communication. When you surrender your worries, you're not abandoning responsibility. Instead, you're acknowledging your limitations as a mortal being and inviting God's divine intervention in your life. It's an act of humility before the Almighty, recognizing His omnipotence and your dependence on Him. Chapter 9 Finding Strength in Scripture After surrendering your worries, you'll find that Scripture serves as a source of strength, offering divine wisdom and guidance for each step of your spiritual journey. This reservoir of divine wisdom isn't merely a collection of ancient texts, it's a living, breathing message from God. These words, breathed by God, wield the power to uplift your spirit, renew your mind, and strengthen your soul. As you delve into the Bible, you'll encounter numerous verses that promise strength to those who trust in God. Take Isaiah 40 verse 29, for instance, which states, He gives power to the faint, and to him whose no might he increases strength. This isn't the assurance of an ordinary being but the guarantee from an omnipotent God. Similarly, the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9 says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I'll boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. This divine assurance isn't just for Paul, but for you too. It's a testament that God's strength is perfect in your weakness, and His grace is enough to carry you through life's storms. Chapter 10 Serving Others with Love You have a responsibility to treat people kindly in imitation of Jesus Christ's selfless love, following the love and strength of God. Serving with love means giving without expecting anything in return, it's about being a reflection of God's grace in the lives of others. This divine mission is articulated in Galatians 5 verse 13, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But don't use your freedom to indulge the flesh, rather, 
serve one another humbly in love. You're not merely encouraged, but commanded to serve one another in love. It's a cornerstone of your Christian journey that echoes through the corridors of biblical teachings. Remember Christ's words in Mark 10 verse 45, For even the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. In order to effectively serve others with love, you need to cultivate a heart that's open, generous, and willing. This isn't always an easy task, as it often requires setting aside personal desires and needs. However, in doing so, you're following in the footsteps of Christ, who, despite his divine status, humbly served those around him. In essence, serving others with love is a profound form of worship, a tangible demonstration of God's love. It's your unique opportunity to be God's hands and feet in this world, showing his love in action. As you serve, remember 1 Peter 4 verse 10, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others, as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Chapter 11. Embracing Unexpected Blessings. As you faithfully serve others with love, you'll often find that God showers you with unexpected blessings. These blessings may not always be materialistic or tangible, but they're priceless gifts from God. Through the biblical lens, these unexpected blessings are manifestations of God's grace and love for you. They're divine interventions, opportunities, or outcomes that surpass human understanding. In the Old Testament, Joseph's life is a perfect example of unexpected blessings. Although he was sold into slavery by his brothers, he rose to become the second most powerful man in Egypt, saving many lives during a famine. God's blessings weren't immediately apparent in Joseph's life, but they unfolded in God's perfect timing. Similarly, Unexpected blessings can be confusing or even seem like a burden at first. You mightn't understand why certain events are happening or why God is leading you down a particular path. But it's important to embrace these blessings, even if they don't match your expectations. You must trust that God is working for your good, even when you can't see the bigger picture. Just like Joseph, you may not see the blessing in the moment, but that doesn't mean God isn't working. Remember Proverbs 3 verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and don't lean on your own understanding. Your role is to embrace these unexpected blessings, trusting that God is using them for your good and His glory. Embracing unexpected blessings isn't always easy, but it's a vital part of your journey of faith. Chapter 12. Letting Go of Control In your spiritual journey, Letting go of control can be one of the most challenging yet liberating steps to take. This step isn't about passivity, but about understanding God's sovereignty and recognizing that His plans are far superior to ours. You might feel uneasy about giving up control, yet it's a crucial aspect of growing in faith. This relinquishment is evident in Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him and he'll make your paths straight. This scripture reflects the heart of letting go, trusting in God's wisdom rather than relying on our limited understanding. The Apostle Paul also exemplifies this in 2 Corinthians 12 verses 9 to 10, where he embraces his weaknesses because it's through them that God's strength is revealed. Paul's willingness to surrender control shows that in our weakness, God's power is perfected. Letting go of control doesn't mean we become inactive or irresolute. On the contrary, it implies active trust in God, seeking His will in prayer, reading His word, and aligning our actions with His guidance. It's acknowledging that God's wisdom and power are infinitely greater than ours. Chapter 13. Rejoicing in God's Provision Once you've surrendered control and trusted in God's wisdom, you'll begin to notice His abundant provision in your life, a divine generosity that calls for joyous celebration. This provision isn't only material but also spiritual, emotional, and relational. God's generosity is multifaceted and boundless, reflecting His expansive love and care for you. In Philippians 4 verse 19, Paul assures believers that, God will supply every need of yours according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. This promise isn't conditional or limited, 
it's a profound declaration of God's abundant provision. Paul, who experienced various hardships, understood the depth of God's generosities. He rejoiced in them and encouraged others to do the same. Moreover, Psalm 145 verse 16 states, You open your hand, you satisfy the desire of every living thing. This verse affirms that God's provision is universal, satisfying not only your needs but also the desires of your heart. It's a call to recognize and celebrate God's provision actively. However, rejoicing in God's provision isn't merely about acknowledging what He's given you, it's also about developing a heart of gratitude. This sentiment resonates in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18, where Paul instructs believers to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. As you cultivate a thankful heart, you'll find your joy increasing, affirming God's presence and His provision. Chapter 14 Forgiving Others Freely Moving forward on your spiritual journey, you'll find that forgiving others freely isn't only a divine command but also a key element in unlocking the peace and joy that God has in store for you. The scriptures are replete with instances and teachings that underscore the importance of forgiveness. For instance, in Colossians 3 verse 13, Paul exhorts believers to bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. This admonition isn't just a guideline but an explicit expectation. You might wonder why such weight is placed on forgiveness. The answer lies in the transformative power of forgiveness. Unforgiveness has been compared to consuming poison and wishing that the other person dies. Unforgiveness breeds bitterness, resentment, and a hardened heart. It obstructs the flow of God's love and grace in your life. But when you forgive, you break the chains that bind you to your past hurts and usher in healing and renewal. You emulate God's mercy and grace, who, despite our transgressions, forgave us freely through Christ's sacrifice on the cross, Ephesians 4 verse 32. Chapter 15 Walking in Faith, Not Fear Your spiritual journey's next step is to walk in faith, not fear, an essential principle highlighted throughout the Bible. Yet, comprehending this concept may be challenging. Fear often appears more tangible than faith, as it's an emotion you can feel, while faith is intangible, existing in the realm of belief and trust. However, the Bible encourages you to walk by faith, not by sight, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7. This verse implies that faith isn't about what you can physically see or touch, but about trusting God and His promises. Walking in faith, therefore, means choosing God's word over your fears and doubts. It's a conscious decision to trust God's sovereignty, even when circumstances seem uncertain or intimidating. In the book of Joshua, God commands Joshua to be strong and courageous, not afraid or discouraged, Joshua 1 verse 9. This command isn't just for Joshua, it's for you too. God's promise to be with Joshua wherever he went is also applicable to you. His presence offers assurance and confidence to face any situation fearlessly. Philippians 4 verses 6-7 instructs you to be anxious for nothing, but in everything, through prayer and supplication, let your requests be known to God. Anxiety and fear are banished when you rely on God's peace, which surpasses all understanding. Chapter 16 Believing in Miracles Ahead As you walk fearlessly in faith, embracing the promises of God, it paves the way for a profound belief in the miracles ahead. This belief isn't merely an abstract concept, but a deeply entrenched conviction that God's supernatural intervention is possible, even imminent. Historically, the Bible is replete with instances of God's miraculous works. Consider the parting of the Red Sea, Exodus 14 verse 21, the healing of the blind men, John 9 verses 1 to 7, or the resurrection of Lazarus, John 11 verses 43 to 44. These accounts aren't presented as allegories, but as factual occurrences, meant to instill in you an enduring belief in the extraordinary. Yet, to believe in miracles is more than acknowledging past events. It requires a forward-looking faith, a faith that anticipates God's action in your future. 
Hebrews 11 verse 1 states, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we don't see. This verse encapsulates the essence of believing in miracles ahead. It's a firm assurance, a confident expectation, that God can intervene in your situation, no matter how dire. Believing in miracles ahead necessitates a shift in perspective. You're called to see beyond the physical, the tangible, and the temporal, aligning your vision with God's eternal perspective. It's about perceiving your circumstances not as they are, but as they could be through divine intervention. Chapter 17 Encouraging Others with Hope In this journey of faith, it's not enough to harbor hope for ourselves, we're also called to be beacons of hope, encouraging others with the assurance of God's miracles. You're tasked with the holy responsibility of uplifting those around you, expressing optimism and confidence in God's divine providence. Your role, as outlined in Romans 15 verse 13, is to overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is more than a recommendation, it is a heavenly duty, a spiritual obligation, to encourage hope in people who are losing faith. By doing so, you're not only fulfilling God's mandate but also strengthening the faith community. Take a close examination of the Apostle Paul's exhortation to the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 11. He instructs believers to encourage one another and build each other up. This verse captures the essence of your role in spreading hope. Your words, actions, and attitude should serve as a testament to God's unfailing promises. This doesn't mean that you should downplay the challenges or dismiss the pain that others are experiencing. Instead, it means that you must help them see beyond their current circumstances. Lead them to find solace in the biblical truth that God's plan surpasses our understanding, and His timing is impeccable. Chapter 18 Praying for God's Will While uplifting others with hope, it's equally crucial to seek God's will through prayer, embracing the divine wisdom that guides every step of our spiritual journey. In the labyrinth of life, you're not expected to navigate alone. The Holy Scripture directs us to ask for His guidance, as stated in James 1 verses 5 to 6, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Praying for God's will doesn't merely involve asking Him for things, it's about aligning your desires with His divine plan. It's about surrendering your control and trusting His providence. In the Gospel of Matthew, 6.10, Jesus models this in the Lord's Prayer, saying, Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it's in heaven. Recognize that God's will isn't always about comfort or convenience, it's about spiritual growth and eternal goodness. It's about what's ultimately best, not what's immediately gratifying. This requires patience, faith, and humility. We see this embodied in Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, Matthew 26 verse 39, where he prays, My Father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Chapter 19 Giving Thanks in All Circumstances Even amidst life's trials, it's crucial that you cultivate a spirit of gratitude, recognizing that every circumstance is part of God's divine plan for your good. It isn't coincidental that the Bible consistently urges you to give thanks in all situations, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18. This isn't a call to a superficial or forced positivity, but a deeply rooted trust in God's sovereignty. You might wonder, how can you be thankful when facing distress or pain? In such moments, it's important to remember that gratitude isn't necessarily about the circumstance itself but about the one who holds all circumstances. He's the same God who promises to work all things together for good for those who love Him, Romans 8 verse 28. When you choose to give thanks in every situation, you're acknowledging that God's ways are higher than yours, Isaiah 55 verse 9, and that He's working in ways you mightn't understand. Gratitude, then, becomes an act of faith, a declaration that God is good, regardless of what your circumstances might suggest. Moreover, Cultivating a thankful heart helps to shift your focus from your problems to God's faithfulness. It's a powerful antidote to worry and fear, 
as it reminds you of God's past faithfulness and His promise to provide for your needs, Philippians 4 verse 19. Chapter 20 Singing Praises to God Beyond the act of thanksgiving, there's power in lifting your voice in songs of praise to God. This is an essential component of worship, a spiritual discipline that affects the divine and the human realms. It isn't merely a religious ritual or a display of vocal prowess. Rather, singing praises to God is an expressive act of acknowledging His sovereignty, love, and grace. Scripture is replete with examples illustrating the potency of singing praises. David, a man after God's own heart, was a prolific psalmist, often seen expressing his adoration, gratitude, and supplications through song. In Psalm 100 verse 2, he encourages us to serve the Lord with gladness, come before His presence with singing. This verse implies that singing praises is a means of entering into God's presence. Moreover, in Acts 16 verse 25, we see Paul and Silas, while in prison, praying and singing hymns to God. Their worship was so powerful it triggered an earthquake that led to their miraculous release. What's key in this account is the realization that praises can bring about divine intervention in seemingly impossible circumstances. It's essential for you to understand that your voice carries spiritual weight. As you sing praises to God, you're not just making a joyful noise, you're declaring faith-filled words that have the power to shift atmospheres and circumstances. So, make it a habit to lift your voice in songs of praise, not just in moments of joy, but also in times of difficulty. Through this, you'll experience an intimate connection with God and witness His mighty works. Chapter 21 Standing Firm in Faith In your spiritual journey, standing firm in faith isn't just an option, it's a divine mandate that requires courage, perseverance, and unwavering trust in God. It's a crucial element of your spiritual growth and a testament to your commitment to God's plan for your life. The Bible, in 1 Corinthians 16 verse 13, admonishes, Be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong. This scripture underscores the necessity of tenacity in faith. Your faith isn't just a passive acceptance of Christian doctrines, it's a proactive stance, a spiritual fortitude that defies the odds. However, standing firm in faith doesn't imply a lack of trials or tribulations. The Apostle Peter, in his first epistle, 1 Peter 5 verses 8 to 9, warns us of adversities but encourages us to remain steadfast in our faith amidst these challenges. Your faith in God shouldn't be swayed by temporal circumstances. Instead, it should be grounded in the eternal truths of God's Word. In the same vein, James 1 verses 2 to 4 speaks about the role of trials in perfecting our faith. You're advised to consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds, for the testing of your faith produces perseverance. You're to let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Therefore, standing firm in faith is a spiritual discipline that needs to be cultivated and nurtured. It's a testament to your unwavering belief in God's promises. It's a battle cry in the face of adversity, a beacon of hope amidst trials, and a testament to the strength of your relationship with God. Chapter 22 Building Your Foundation on God As your faith strengthens and perseveres through trials, it's crucial to build your spiritual house on a solid foundation, God Himself. This foundation isn't constructed overnight, it requires consistent commitment, diligent prayer, and the study of God's Word. Consider the metaphor used by the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 3 verses 10 to 11, according to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder I laid a foundation, and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Here, Paul emphasizes that Christ is the ultimate foundation for any believer's life. Building your spiritual life on God demands surrender to His will. It means walking in obedience, even when the path ahead seems uncertain. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 advises, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and don't lean on your own understanding. 
In all your ways acknowledge him, and he'll make straight your paths. This passage highlights the importance of placing our faith and trust in God above our understanding and perceptions. Chapter 23 Declaring Victory in God's Name Embracing the power of God's name, you're called to declare victory over challenges that confront you in your spiritual journey. This assertion of triumph isn't a mere wishful thinking but a biblical mandate as seen in Proverbs 18 verse 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it and are safe. You see, declaring victory in God's name isn't about denying reality or ignoring your problems. It's about recognizing the superior reality of God's sovereignty and faithfulness. You're not simply hoping for the best, but actively aligning yourself with the power and promise inherent in God's name. Invoking God's name in your declaration of victory is a powerful act. In the Bible, God's name carries His authority, His promises, and His character. It's a name above all names, a name that holds power over every circumstance, Philippians 2 verse 9. Therefore, when you declare victory in God's name, you're not just speaking words into the air. You're wielding a spiritual weapon, a divine authority given to you by God Himself. Don't be timid or hesitant in declaring your victory. Remember, in Romans 8 verse 37, it's written, In all these things, we're more than conquerors through Him who loved us. You're not merely fighting for victory but from victory. God has already won the battle for you. You just have to step into that victory, declaring it boldly in His name. This is a key step in your spiritual journey, a leap of faith that unleashes God's power in your lives. Chapter 24 Holding on to God's Promises Holding on to God's promises, you'll find an unwavering anchor for your soul, a sure and steadfast hope that drives away every fear. This anchoring isn't a mere emotional or psychological strategy but a profound spiritual reality rooted in the character of God Himself. The Bible, in Hebrews 6 verse 19, affirms this, We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. God's promises aren't empty words or wishful thinking. They're backed by His unchanging nature. Numbers 23 19 says, God isn't a man that He should lie, nor a son of man that He should change His mind. Does He speak and then not act? Does He promise and not fulfill? This passage confirms God's unchanging nature and His commitment to fulfill His promises. Holding on to God's promises requires faith, which is a deep-seated trust in God's reliability. It's an active, persistent belief that God will do what He said, despite how circumstances may appear. In Hebrews 11 verse 1, faith is defined as, the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Chapter 25 Celebrating God's Faithfulness As you recognize God's faithfulness displayed in your life, you'll see miracles occurring in your day-to-day -day experiences. Trusting in God leads to a profound sense of gratitude for the blessings received and the fulfillment of His promises. Let's explore these aspects of celebrating God's faithfulness and how they intertwine to solidify our faith and trust in Him. God's Faithfulness Displayed in reflecting upon God's unwavering faithfulness, you can't help but rejoice and celebrate His enduring grace, a theme that's reverently echoed throughout the Bible. His faithfulness isn't merely a characteristic, it's His very nature, a divine promise that permeates every verse and story. For instance, God's covenant with Abraham in Genesis 15 verses 1 to 6 isn't simply a testament of God's promise, it's a vibrant display of His faithfulness. The same faithfulness is evident in Psalm 36 verse 5, where the psalmist marvels at God's steadfast love. These references not only exhibit God's faithfulness, but they also invite you to trust, knowing He'll remain true to His word. Such understanding fosters celebration and gratitude for God's unchanging faithfulness. Miracles in Daily Life Witnessing miracles in your daily life serves as a stirring reminder of God's unwavering faithfulness, manifesting in ways both grand and subtle. Often, these miracles come in forms you might overlook, the sun rising each day, a kind word from a stranger, or the healing of a loved one's illness. 
Each of these instances, while seemingly mundane or coincidental, is a testament to the divine interventions that punctuate our existence. Consider the miracle of life itself, as described in Psalm 139 verse 14, I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Grasp the profound significance of these daily miracles. Celebrate them, for their clear evidence of God's enduring love and faithfulness. Trust in God. In the midst of the hustle and bustle of life, it is critical to cultivate an unbroken confidence in God, celebrating His faithfulness as demonstrated in the miracles we witness on a daily basis. Trusting in God isn't a passive act but an active engagement in faith. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 urges us to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. This verse implies that your trust in God should supersede your fears, doubts, and human reasoning. It's about surrendering control, acknowledging that God's ways and thoughts are higher than ours, Isaiah 55 verse 9. Trusting in God's faithfulness means recognizing His omnipotence, omniscience, and omnipresence in every aspect of your life. It's an affirmation of His unchanging nature and infinite love for you. Gratitude for Blessings Building on this foundation of trust, you'll find that gratitude for the blessings received is a natural response to God's faithfulness. It's essential to recognize every blessing, big or small, as a divine gift. The psalmist in Psalm 103 verse 2 cautions, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. This verse reminds us to remember and appreciate God's blessings. Gratitude isn't merely a reaction, but a conscious choice that deepens our faith and relationship with God. It's a recognition of God's sovereignty and goodness in all circumstances. God's Promises Fulfilled As you delve deeper into the scriptures, you'll discover numerous instances of God's promises being fulfilled, reinforcing His unwavering faithfulness and commitment to His children. Consider Abraham's narrative in Genesis 22, where God's promise of progeny as numerous as the stars was actualized. Or reflect on the Exodus story, where God's vow to free His people from Egyptian bondage was realized. These aren't just historical events, they're divine affirmations of God's enduring fidelity to His Word. They serve to remind you that God's promises aren't empty. He's not a God who reneges on His Word. Instead, He's a God who's steadfast in fulfilling His commitments, thereby showcasing His boundless love and unwavering faithfulness. Testimonies of Victory In the same vein of God's fulfilled promises, let's explore various testimonies of victory, which serve as vibrant celebrations of His faithfulness. You'll find that the Bible is replete with narratives of triumph. Consider the Israelites, who, despite facing towering walls and a formidable enemy in Jericho, emerged victorious through God's intervention, Joshua 6. Similarly, David's defeat of Goliath, 1 Samuel 17, underscores divine victory in seemingly impossible circumstances. Each of these testimonies reinforces the truth of God's unwavering commitment to His people. They aren't just historical accounts, but vivid demonstrations of God's faithfulness, intended to bolster your faith. Divine Provision Testimony Countless stories in the Bible highlight God's divine provision, illustrating His unwavering commitment to fulfilling His promises and meeting the needs of His people. From the abundant manna in the wilderness, Exodus 16 verse 35, to the widow's endless jar of oil, 2 Kings 4 verses 1 to 7, the Bible is replete with instances of God's extraordinary provision. Each account demonstrates His fidelity, even in situations that appear hopeless. You're invited to reflect on these testimonies of divine provision, acknowledging God's steadfast love and faithfulness. Relate them to your personal circumstances, recognizing that the same God who provided for the Israelites, the widow, and countless others, is willing and able to meet your needs. Divine provision isn't a thing of the past, it's an ongoing testament of God's faithfulness. Praise for Answered Prayers Reflecting on your own journey, you'll find that moments of answered prayers stand as monuments to God's faithfulness, inviting you to bask in praise and gratitude. These instances serve as spiritual landmarks, 
guiding you towards a deeper appreciation of His divine workings. Just as David expressed in Psalm 28 verse 7, The Lord is my strength and my shield, my heart trusts in Him, and He helps me. My heart leaps for joy, and with my song, I praise Him. You're not merely advised, but commanded to praise Him, Psalm 150 verse 6. When God answers your prayers, it's an affirmation of His love and power. It's a divine testimony you can share with others, encouraging them to trust in His unwavering faithfulness. Reflections on Answered Prayers Every time God answers your prayers, it's an opportunity to celebrate His unwavering faithfulness, a chance to delve deeper into the mystery of His divine providence. His responses to your supplications aren't arbitrary, they're deliberate, revealing His meticulous plan for your life. Reflecting on answered prayers allows you to appreciate His wisdom in timing, His grace in provision, and His love in His responses. Psalm 66 verses 19 to 20 reminds you, But truly God has listened, He's attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, because He hasn't rejected my prayer or removed His steadfast love from me. Understanding this isn't just theological, it's deeply personal and transformative, fostering a more profound relationship with God. Living in God's favor. Immersing yourself in God's favor is more than just a spiritual concept, it's a transformative journey that affirms God's enduring faithfulness in your life. As you live under His favor, you'll see His promises unfolding and His mercies renewing daily. In this celebration of God's faithfulness, you witness His hand in every facet of your life. This isn't mere happenstance, it's divine providence. You're not just a recipient of God's favor, but a testament to His faithfulness. His favor isn't a ticket to a life without challenges, but it's an assurance that God's got you, even in the midst of those challenges. In recognizing His hand, reflecting on His miracles, and practicing gratitude, you see God's faithfulness. By trusting His timing, journaling His deeds, and building your foundation on Him, you grow in His grace. Declare victory, hold on to His promises, and celebrate His goodness. You've seen it, lived it, and known it, God has done it for you. Embrace His love, trust His plan, and rejoice in His never-ending faithfulness. Thanks for listening.